Hey guys, it's Corbett. If you have been watching this channel for almost 10 years, which is how long we've been releasing videos, you may have noticed that we used to be called Green Dream Group. Uh, we figured out after not too long that we weren't about green or about dreams. What we were really interested in is techniques and tools for tuning the performance of buildings. And so we rebranded as the Building Performance Workshop. Well, for the first time in almost 10 years, I'd like to welcome you to the actual physical Building Performance Workshop. This workshop is part of our homestead here in Atlanta. We're right close to the Atlanta airport, which is the busiest airport in the world, apparently. But it's not terribly loud, except when you're trying to shoot a video. Um, so air tightness, insulation, all important. Everything that we're going to talk about here is important. The tiny lab, which we still live in, is up the hill. And here you have a 30 foot wide, 50 foot deep, what used to be a stable, then became a garage, then became a catch-all black hole for all of this stuff that the people who used to live here just put and forgot about forever and ever. So when we first got here, this is what the whole thing looked like. It was covered with roofing that looked like this rusty mess of nastiness that was full of holes and let water in all over the place. And it was covered on the walls with these nasty pieces of rotting plywood that were covered with vines as well. So there were animals getting in there, there was water getting in, all of the things that the Building Performance Workshop would like to make sure is more under control. So um, the first thing that you'll notice is that I replaced the roof. And when I say I replaced the roof, I mean literally I did that myself. I'm very proud of that, but uh, I've never done anything on a roof before. Come on in here and I'll show you what else is going on. When we got here, it was dark and smelly and disgusting and there was a car and a whole bunch of other stuff that we need to get out of here, including a bunch of books that had rotted. Uh, now, real people who are trying to store things understand that you cannot just store things in an outdoor shed in Atlanta. That's not gonna work. It's gonna rot. You're gonna have condensation. We've got major temperature swings here, which I'm gonna get back to in a minute when we talk about another part of this uh, that we're gonna get to. But the, all this stuff is potentially gonna rot. And so we wanted to have more durable materials, materials that were gonna admit more light. And you can see it's daytime. It's well lit in my workshop. I do not need to be working in my workshop at night because I am a family guy now. I have kids. So I'm interested in being with my family at night. Therefore, I ripped out all of the lighting in here. You can see where there used to be some uh, fluorescent lighting receptacles, all gone. I don't care. Don't need lights in here. I can use task lighting if I really need to. But in the meantime, the entire roof is covered with this translucent, not transparent, polycarbonate material that's very, very durable. It's going to last a very long time. Um, in fact, I've stepped on it. I can see videos online of like people running over with tractors, and it bends us back into shape. So that was very easy to attach, uh, albeit up on the roof, which was kind of uh, precarious, but no injuries occurred, which was nice. So all of the framing in this place is original. Some of it was rotted, and you can see on some of the walls where I have uh, what's called sistered in additional pieces of two by four, just basically put them right alongside the original framing and then attached it um, to the uh, top plate and the bottom plate. My little girl is very excited about that as well. It turns out that per square foot, plywood is about the same price as metal, is about the same price and actually a little bit more than this polycarbonate. This polycarbonate is going to last just as long. I don't have to paint it like plywood. So plywood was out at the very beginning. Uh, and it's see-through, not see-through, but it admits light. That's the difference between transparency and translucence, by the way. So I can work in here without worrying that people are spying on me or whatever. This material admits 85% of the sunlight that comes through it, but it does not let UV light through and it doesn't let condensation build up on the inside surface. It's going to make it into much more of a mist, like beading, instead of really turning into big droplets. Uh, the diffusion is the thing that really matters here because it's got almost 100% diffusion. So once the sunlight comes in, it does not di beam directly where it was originally heading. It spreads out everywhere. So that's why you can see this light is so beautiful everywhere inside my workshop. That's what I wanted. It's all laid so that water will find its way away from the building. In fact, the roof panels are all one long piece from the ridge out to the eave. We don't have to worry about water getting in here anymore, which is great. And now that we are at that point, I can get to the floor. This is where there was a Cadillac for probably 800 years, just sitting here rotting on all four flats. Uh, oil stains, nasty. So what I'm about to do is come in here and pressure wash this because it's the last time I'm going to be able to pressure wash it. Uh, once I clean this floor, tomorrow I'm going to start building a dry vault right here. 
We have a 50 foot deep workshop and back here I'm going to build a 12 foot deep and 24 foot wide dry vault. The dry vault is for keeping all of the things that I'm, I care about, like my diagnostic equipment, blower doors and duct testers and infrared cameras, et cetera, et cetera, and also all the tools that I need in order to build our next house on this land, uh, including things like chop saws and uh, pressure washers and things like that that I'm going to be using on a regular basis, chainsaws. I don't want that stuff to be rusting. And that's what will happen to it if it's just out here collecting condensation and rising and falling with the temperature of the day. So inside this room is going to be, uh, first of all, humidity controlled, not temperature controlled. I'll get to the temperature goal in just, just a minute, but the humidity control comes from a desiccant dehumidifier, which is going to be installed in the space. It's just a real small standalone unit. Uh, and it will control the humidity in both warm temperatures and cold temperatures. So it makes sure that it's dry no matter what temperature it is outside. It's a little different than normal dehumidifiers. Also, because we're going to be controlling the air quality and the moisture level of the air, we want to make sure that this room is going to be airtight. Airtight is the most important thing you can do to any building that's going to be a residential structure in the world, period. Don't let anybody tell you different. It will also be insulated, but that is secondary to the air tightness. Now, the air tightness is going to be achieved with our old friends, Solatex Mento and Intello. Uh, now, these two membranes and the tapes that attach them to themselves and to the uh, floor, ceiling, etc., are going to be what provides the air tightness layer for everything. So I don't have to worry about all the little tiny seams and cracks and things like that in the plywood layer on the outside or on the inside because I have a membrane on both sides. So once I have taken care of this, we have the air tightness taken care of. Insulation wise, I do want the room not to swing as much as the rest of the world is swinging in Atlanta because of course the sun comes out, the temperature goes up, uh, winter comes, the clouds go overhead, at night it's going to drop, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You're going to have these big swings. What I want this room to do is to stay pretty constant. It can move. I don't care what temperature it is, but I don't want it to do this all the time. So I want it to move a lot slower. Therefore, I am going to be insulating it. We're going to be insulating with what's called Havelock wool. Um, both of these air sealing and insulating products are from 475 High Performance Building Supply. Once we have this bolted down to the slab floor, which is going to be clean, we have our structure built, we have a well-lit space, we have dehumidification in the right places, then we're going to be able to really start getting into the building performance aspects of things, which we're going to be exploring through the build of our next home, which I'm very excited to start showing you. So we're going to get into that once we have this structure up. We're going to do a performance test on it and you'll be able to see actually what we achieved with the air tightness, the insulation, etc., the dehumidification, the air quality inside that room. By the way, obviously I'm not going to be using formaldehyde uh, off-gassing products inside the room because it's going to be so airtight. So I hope that you'll stay tuned. I hope you subscribe to the channel. I hope that you feel free to reach out to us in the comments below or through our website, which is buildingformanceworkshop.com. Tune in next time.